provide you with a little uh, overview of what's going on in the UMC Utrecht. Um, I will not extensively touch upon the topics of open access um, and fair data, as they, of course, will be covered by uh, Bianca and uh, Nico Popelier uh, later. Um, just uh, a few uh, things. Um, let me share this slide. So I like this um, uh, painting, which uh, comes from the 18th century, but really depicts a 17th century experiment with an air pump um, that um, removes all air from this uh, glass sphere in which a bird is uh, flying until, of course, uh, the air runs out. Um, it has been hailed as the, the start of experimentalism, as in as doing experiments that can be understood by a wider audience um, and, and the start of empiricism, but also, of course, of creating legitimacy for your um, experiments and for your facts by uh, engaging with the public, uh, you uh, could say, uh, if we uh, translate it to uh, the current open science themes. So this is very much open uh, and, and the public is very much uh, engaged. Um, I think that's a nice metaphor for what we are doing now. So uh, it's about opening up uh, knowledge production and, and the dissemination uh, and about yeah, aligning better those recognitions and rewards uh, for individual researchers and research groups maybe and, and what we expect as society from, uh, from science. Uh, Utrecht University has, has captured that in, in four tracks uh, you see here. Um, and, and I think you can understand open science as a, a response to um, yeah, concerns about equality in a very broad sense, about the impact of commercial parties uh, on science, on uh, unequal access. Uh, and of course, this is all accelerated by, uh, by internet and digitalization. I mean, many of the arguments, for example, about open sec access were valid, let's say, 25 years ago, but of course, uh, only now with everything being shareable uh, through internet, uh, it's also possible. So what are we doing uh, at the University Medical Center Utrecht? I think we have uh, an especially long history in um, yeah, changing our incentives and rewards in, in trying to align uh, incentives and rewards uh, for individuals and for the Institute as a whole with uh, societal expectations. Um, as, as early as 2013, we involved societal stakeholders in our research evaluation. We expanded on that in our latest evaluation in 2019. Um, already five years ago, we introduced a qualification portfolio for professors and later for associate professors, uh, asking uh, people to describe themselves on, on five domains in a very broad manner uh, as to capture, of course, traditional output measures, but also activities uh, related to societal impact, to valorization, uh, leadership. Um, and so as to, to really broaden out what, what counts as, as valuable in a university medical center. Only recently, um, yeah, this has been thought through for a PhD thesis, for example, and the Graduate School of Life Sciences now has a new PhD guideline um, asking for a minimum of three publishable chapters, yeah, which is not the same as published, um, and uh, which is a, a deviation from an, an informal norm uh, uh, and in many departments uh, of, of four or five, maybe six published uh, uh, chapters, uh, which you can trace back to uh, an NFU guideline uh, of, of many years ago. Um, so uh, this also represents a, uh, a significant change in, in thinking about, okay, uh, what does it mean to do a PhD? Uh, uh, publicizing your results, of course, is, is part of, of being a researcher, but uh, only of reducing a PhD to four or five published articles is, of course, not uh, how it was uh, intended. Um, and as of now, we are um, even more formalizing this, um, uh, this variety in, in, in research careers or research profiles, if you will. So we are um, uh, defining multiple career paths you can pursue as a researcher in the UMC, uh, where you can uh, you can also engage in valorization, you can uh, do more implementation research, you could be more a staff researcher. And we are uh, defining criteria uh, for those different profiles and um, well have them embedded in the organization uh, in the years uh, to come. Um, so that's about recognition and rewards. Um, 
for open access, yeah, I, I'll leave it to Bianca, I think, uh, to explain more on this. Um, I think the good news is with the recent LSV deal that if you count all papers of all UMCs combined, uh, already 17% of them are published open access in one way or another. Um, so that's, I was surprised by, uh, by that percentage. Um, but of course, there's still a way to go. Um, and one of the ways to go is the uh, implementation of the Taverna pilot, eh, which means we can um, um, make open access available publications of researchers of uh, university medical centers, uh, despite or uh, notwithstanding uh, the fact that they have been published in a, in a journal and it, it's, it's behind the paywall. Um, then to uh, public engagement and outreach, uh, I translate that for UMC purposes uh, to patient participation, which of course is smaller or narrower. Uh, I appreciate that, but um, I, I think it's the, 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 yeah, the best manifestation of, of public engagement uh, in, in our context. Um, of course, there's a long history of, of uh, engaging with patients uh, in the University Medical Center also uh, in terms of priority setting and then research design. Um, uh, only a few years ago, we really started a strategic program for uh, patient participation, also in research, um, uh, which facilitates and stimulates researchers who want to uh, involve patients in their research. Um, but there are many uh, local examples, I would say, of, of departments of individual researchers or PIs uh, doing this. And there are two papers here uh, pasted below of uh, articles, Casper, uh, I think Casper Schoenmaker, uh, the patient representative who engages in research together with researchers and patients uh, about uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Uh, and in the case of cystic fibrosis, we also collaborate with the patient organization in well, trying to come up with um, yeah, research priorities and uh, really together with, with patients. Um, yeah, uh, Geo Pastenkamp already mentioned the um, uh, faculty open science team. The members are listed here. Um, and they are the people who are um, yeah, supposed to stimulate open science in the UMC Utrecht uh, along the lines I mentioned earlier. Um, if you know some of them uh, and you, you want to know more, just reach out to them. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail of what everybody's uh, doing right now, but uh, all along those four tracks, these people in the UMC Utrecht uh, serve as an uh, uh, ambassador. And in um, uh, education or teaching, uh, this is already also very big, um, not necessarily under the term open science, but uh, like I just said, so it's about patients, it's about translating knowledge from uh, bench to bedside or from uh, laboratory to, uh, to society. Uh, translational medicine is one way of capturing that. Um, there's increasingly we have a translational courses, uh, profiles in our curriculum. Uh, there's a uh, annual summer school aimed at PhDs and, and uh, postdocs and higher um, for people who want to become more effective translational researchers. Um, so here also UMC Utrecht has a, a long tradition of uh, well opening up and really making sure that uh, the research we do has an, an impact in society. And um, yeah, a special request of Sander, I, uh, I was asked to make this as practical as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, a few things were of course already mentioned. So that's a, a little uh, um, stating the obvious about uh, open access and preprints. Uh, fair data will be covered uh, later. Um, involve patients in research. Well, be aware that there is really a team in the UMC Utrecht uh, who wants to help you and assist you with that. Um, uh, and indeed, if you want to become more effective as a translational researcher, uh, there are, well, depending on where you are in your career phase, um, uh, there, there are courses or summer schools uh, that can help you with that. And I think with that, I want to leave it. 